What is up everybody? Welcome back to what is not my garage. However, uh, it is something way, way, way better. This is gonna be an install video because spring is here and we decided to just get a head start with that. But I have relocated to the greatest place of all time. See that? Thanks to Hi. this wonderful man right here. It's me. It's you. It's also you. This is also me. And we are we. We are us. This is us. Who are we? We are Blue Label Racing. We are Blue Label Racing. That was good. I like that. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> In some of my previous videos, I've been hinting at that, that something has been going on and uh, it wasn't crazy. But I decided to drop everything. There's, there's a mirror. Oh, that's, oh. That's, the, that's the owner. This beautiful guy. I don't have my beard. He doesn't have his beard. But, you know, oh, it's, been it's okay. Well, because of this gentleman here and this gentleman here, I've relocated to this wonderful place called Blue Label Racing here in Kansas City. And that's pretty much the big news. And this allows us to do a lot of cool things together um, because Colin, which you guys should know him, I've talked about him. Has I have many... a YouTube channel. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Shameless plug. He has a YouTube channel where he races Sunday Cup in a Mini Cooper. And you've probably seen it. I'm going to link it. I've talked about it. Um, I've tagged him on my Instagram. And Amir, well, he has a lot of cool shit. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> we'll, we'll make videos. We're we have, have to make videos. Channel. Yeah, we're going to have to tie that up. But that's the big reveal. Uh, we're going to go into the video, and that's going to be installing springs. Okay, now to the main event. Thank you for clicking on this video. I really appreciate it. Welcome back to all the OG subscribers. So if you're new to this channel... I would like to introduce you to my 1995 Mazda Miata that has been through a crazy journey. I've had this thing for about five years. It started off as a spec Miata, um, and then it's just progressively gotten more and more competitive as the time goes on. This car is set up to run GLTC Grid Life's competition. Basically, that is a full wheel-to-wheel -wheel car, uh, fully caged, all that stuff, um, power-to-weight ratio based, and it has... In right now, it is a medium downforce car. It's running 245 square, big brakes, supercharger, and it weighs about 2,700 pounds. In my last video, when I went to take this car on track finally to test out everything, um, I was having a hell of a problem with the suspension, the handling, and how everything went. And come to find out, me being me, I got a set of uh, BC Racing ER Series, took them out of the box, slapped them on there, got a corner balance and aligned, hit the road. Did not think about the fact that the spring rates on these coilovers were not necessarily meant to hold all these modifications. To combat that, I got the ever so popular Swift Springs, and these are a set of 900 in the rear and 1600 in the front, and that should help combat a couple different things. Um, one, the wheel from bottoming out and hitting the fender liners or the wheel wells. Uh, two, it's gonna help with the load and how it transfers front to back, left to right, um, be a lot stiffer, and it's gonna keep the contact patch along the bottom of the tire, more contacted with the ground, improving grip, improving predictability, and improving handling. Along with these modifications, I also got me a set of AWR sway bar reinforcement brackets. Um, if you are not familiar with these, what that does is it basically your factory NA Miata and MD have a very thin piece of metal that holds the sway bar. Perfectly fine for a stock chassis car, but when you start getting into these heavier duty stuff, they start flexing, 
and you basically lose all purpose of what the sway bar was there to begin with. So that gets rid of that, puts in a heavier duty box, put that on, keeps that nice and solid, and that way the sway bar can do what it needs to do. So let's get to installing these Swift Springs and AWR sway bar reinforcement brackets. All right, so what are we doing here? Um, I'm, I'm just curious, really, because I'm thinking about, I have a Mini, and it has a completely different like geometry than this car. I'm just noticing how little travel you have in your suspension in this car, especially here at the rear, because this is like three fingers worth of travel, just thinking about where I remember this wheel sitting stationary when it's loaded. And I know Miatas have a problem with rear travel from the factory. They don't have a lot, which is why they make those extended top hats in the rear. But it looks like in terms of travel, right now there's more available spring travel than there is wheel travel. Like that spring could probably compress further beyond how much room we have to go up into the wheel well. So I'm thinking about like, how could we gain more, we can't change how far up the wheel can go beyond maybe like, you've done some cutting and tucking up there, but if we could gain more droop, then we could, you know, potentially have prolonged contact over, say, uh, a lift on track. So if we had like a slightly longer spring, in theory, I would think you would be able to have a little bit more droop. Which would be good, because one of the issues I think, besides pertaining to have the alignment being moved due to the control arm bolts, was a very weird hoppy rear end, and it almost felt like under full load, I lost all uh -huh. um, traction, per se. Like, I, I, I reached the maximum limit of traction on the tire and that shock, and it just started doing this weird skippy thing where it just, like, skipped around the corner. Like, full full power through a turn? Yep. In the middle of a turn? Yep. Like, started yep. doing one yep. of these sort of things? Yep. Yeah. And I did notice that, and I was going to do the extended stop hats, but this is a little more important right now than the extended top hats. I think the extended top hats maybe would come into use once you get once you get these dialed in and you know that you're using your full your full amount of wheel travel and then you run into lack of shock travel, then you need the extra shock yep. travel to go into the car so that you can use the extra um, full full range of the shock. Again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Spent all that time destroying Nap Motorsports beautiful work and um, it was pointless because I'm getting a whole different master cylinder. So, you know when you're just really bored and you really want to work on something so you just try to come up with something to work on? That's 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 a product of that. Well if it's worth doing once it's worth doing twice, right? Yep. Thrice? Three? Twice. Thrice. I've literally got the pizza sweats right now. Pizza sweats? Dude, I'm like cooking right now for some reason. I honestly cannot relate. It's all the fat that I just ate and consumed is just like, it's just telling me I'm old. That's all I need to tell you. <laughs> when you hit 30, your body is just like, <laughs> hey, I'm a few months off. Good luck. Well, welcome. Just, you're going to, you'll see. You'll see. Mm -hmm. you'll see. I'm, I'm sure it'll happen immediately as I turn 30. Yep. You're going to wake up out of bed and you're going to be like, <gasps> everything's just going to pop and you're going to be like, that's new. Hey, I'm already there actually. I'd like to take just a moment to appreciate this thing that Jorge does because, uh, well, that's not there, there. This, that, this, all these little green dots that say, hey, I torqued this down. I really appreciate that and I've never done that and I kind of want to start doing it now that I've seen you do it. You should, um, especially on like the uh, more higher end racy stuff. It just, it tells me you give, you, you care. You care a little bit more to just go through the effort and make sure everything is marked. And then usually for racing, it's more of like, you can quickly look, oh crap, that's unbolted. You can quickly tighten mm -hmm. it down. But it just, it does, it lets you know like, oh, hey, I already been there. Don't need to do that again, so. Yep, reassurance nice. in the moment when you're doing bolt checks between sessions. That's a lot. That is a lot oh of preload. 
It just keeps going. It looks really stiff. It's getting better. That was a lot. I mean, that kind of wow. the whole purpose of... Yeah, the having spring. the extra length of the spring. That was like, I feel like that was a quarter inch of preload. Yeah, that was a lot. Like, why wouldn't you set the, the balance with the shot height? Yeah. That was a lot. Well, I'm glad I trusted my instincts. Yeah. Because normally I would, you know, knowing that they're going to be really set, I would just pop the cap off and said, good. That would have, I mean, it wouldn't have like hurt, but it would have been a shocking discovery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'd almost think that we have them back. Oh boy. Mm. Nice catch. You'd almost think we'd have these backwards because mm -hmm. there's the height difference. But you can see the thickness and the shortness or what's actually given us our spring rate, I guess you want to say. The amount of coils versus how thick it is versus how long it is is how they calculate the spring rate. So, kind of weird. Into the hole you go. Oh, yep, yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yep, yep. Are they thicker? They are thicker, they're girthier. The girth is real, but I don't know if I could, Oh boy. So, that was convenient one way. But now, uh, now I gotta figure out how to do it the other way. So, this is why I dislike these attached reservoir shocks here. Uh, what if we just cut the top of the strut bigger? Why don't you just cut the strut in half? All right, so I don't know how I got this to do that. So we're just gonna slap that back on there. Yep, yep, like so. Ah, oh, look how pretty that, oh, these look so much better. It's a girl. I would trust if she was working out I'm gonna be the first one to tell you, I don't know a whole lot about suspension. I have very good knowledge, but not as much as this genius oh, right here. Oh, I, I have as much. I guess collectively together, it's working out really well. He knows some things I don't, I know some things he don't. There's doesn't, there's overlap. I have some experience in the mini land. He has experience in Miata land. And uh, we're both learning things because I'm used to McPherson strut stuff and he's got double A arms. So we're playing with shock setup and matching, uh, matching shock travel with tire travel so that they top out or bottom out at the top of the uh, wheel well at the same time. Uh, we have the strut, sorry, we have the shock installed and the wheel installed, but there's no spring in it. So in theory, I, I can just lift it freely like that. This is an interesting workout. Is that lats? What is that? It's, it's shoulders. Back, actually. It's probably not good for you. <laughs> is, is it so, your back? So what we're going to do is put the jack under the wheel and jack it up until the wheel is almost touching uh, whatever it touches first, uh, the wheel well, and set that to our maximum bump travel. And then we're gonna take the shock and spin it up until it reaches that same point where its top of its travel is maxed out. That way they're calibrated to each other and then when you install the uh, spring, you just set the perch to a, a slight bit of preload, and then your droop is exactly where it should be. And you maximize the travel of all of your components. Yep. And I know one for 100% sure that was not done. Um, it was just set and then corner balanced and gone. So let's do this and see what we got. Nothing here. Here, here. Where are you contacting? Why are you closed? Oh, it's contacting the jack. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay, right, we're good. Okay, we are free. I think this is about the. Oh man, this right eye would be sick. It would, but no, that's our that's our full compression right there. God, that looks so good. Why? Why? Why do slam cars look good? Yeah, it's actually kind of impressive. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I don't think I can get any tighter without two hands, so. Yeah, I think it's just gonna be too much. Yeah. George just had a revelation about how much droop he was missing out on. It's like, look at this. This line is about there in the middle. No, we're gonna get more precise. Okay, so we have, what would you say? 18 and a half. 18 and a half to the center. Yep, so 18 and a half to the center. Now, we are at, holy crap, an inch and a half of extra droop. Dude, we maximize that we're using the full effect of the shock. Before we were only using part, part of the shock. So now when it's going over a bump, we're using the full effect of the shock and using the bump stop for what it's for to stop it from using, from bottoming out. So now the tire, if it does scrub, it'll be so minute that under load and compression or turns, it's gonna maintain its grip on the tires. So I'm not gonna all of a sudden go under load, hit a bump and then it basically stops the tire from moving because it's rubbing up on the fender. It's not gonna do that anymore. I'm gonna actually have the full travel and hopefully theoretically maintain maximum contact patch on the ground. So I was missing up out an inch and a half of suspension travel. It, it just, it's just that. I was missing out an inch and a half and I wasn't maximizing the use of the shocks. All right, so we got this side set up and uh, through a series of fortunate events, we are slowly putting together things. Okay, let's rephrase this. You know when you know something. And you think you know something. And you think you know something, there you go. And you don't know, you know it until you know it. And then suddenly, you realize that you know it. Yep, that's what's going on here. We have now set droop and the travel. So we have been, I'm just gonna straight admit it, we have both been setting things up kind of wrong. We set full compression. Yep. We set full compression, which gains us droop at the bottom. Yep. Because we're using a range of the shock that we couldn't use before. Yes. That, that's exactly what it is. Um, so the setup before wasn't necessarily wrong. It was just very tight and it wasn't able to use the whole thing. And now we're gonna maximize everything. So this is set up, um, you know, those things that, you know, honey, it's gonna only take an hour. Yeah, um, we're now on to shock two <laughs> and we still got the rear to go. But yeah, while he does that, I'm gonna work on the right rear and then hopefully we can get this done faster. I don't know, we're gonna be on autopilot. We're gonna blink, it's gonna be three o'clock in the morning anyway, so. See you then. Colin installs the wheel. <gasps> we will explain what we've discovered. We have discovered some discoveries. Okay, so once again, this is one of those, you know, you know, you know, until you find out, then you know, moments. And the Miata is notorious for the rear suspension having not the best travel. Um, and I know there are top hats and stuff like that. I'm a very visual and physical learner. I have to actually do and see what's going on to comprehend and as we were doing this, I now 100% understand why they make the extended top hats for the rears of these cars. Exhibit A. Yep. Okay, so if you remember this one, how it was tucked and hot boy and slammed, and that was the full droop. This is literally... Full bump. Full bump. It is. That is... That's as high as it goes. That's as high as it goes. So what happens is you get an extended top hat, which goes over there. It's about a little inch plate or inch and a half plate. And it allows an inch more travel up and it gives you a better travel range for the rear. And I now understand why this is gonna be terrible uh, for the setup that we're gonna do. George, I'm second guessing myself again. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I don't think you understand. We have spent 20 minutes discussing this off camera and now he's changing his mind. <laughs> I'm not changing my mind yet. Maybe. It needs a top hat. That's 
It's just gonna need a top hat. Top hats would be very beneficial. Not just for looks and fashion, for suspension travel too. All right, um, we did it. Now comes the fun part, let's just set it down. Monster truck. <laughs> Monster truck status achieved. <laughs> I knew it was going to sit super high up on the front. So yeah, it rigged out like we thought. Well, and there you have it. We're going to have to do a little bit more, uh, not research. We're going to have to get a little more parts to finish this project up. Um, we didn't have time for the sway bar mounts. That's just going to have to be a different thing. Um, we also, I mean, like I said, we have a lot to go. I also have that I'm going to be installing another video, which is a one inch master cylinder by Willwood uh, from Super Miata. That's just going to compensate some stuff. So that'll be another video. So if you want to see that, if you want to see a corner balance, if you want to see any other stuff, you might as well just uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification because we're going to be doing a lot more to this. It's going to ring be the bell. Techo. Yep. This bell. Bing, bing. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Don't forget to ring the bell. Also, this beautiful man here. Oh, yeah. Also has a YouTube channel. Hi, my name's Colin, R-Y-S-E-R, -E Colin Reeser. Yep. Find me, subscribe, ring the bell. Do it. Do it. Be better. Thank you. <laughs> what did you take off your shoes? It's, it's the shoe test. What is it? It fails the shoe test catastrophically. I can fit two of my shoes in there. It's supposed to be the credit card test. Okay, guys. Yes. Anyways, it's a long night. It is almost, it, it is, is 1 a.m. I mean, it's 1 a.m. Um, this is one of those projects. It, we, we took a left turn down Experimental Road and decided we're going to actually do this properly and get everything set up, and I'm glad we did. I'm glad you thought about it because I probably wouldn't have done it. We probably just put the springs on and been like, we did it, and then <laughs> gone to the track and be like, why does it feel the same? And now we have knowledge that we didn't have before. We have ideas that we didn't have before. And overall, it's gonna be a better experience. The car will drive completely differently. Yeah, completely different than it did before. Yep. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Hit that bell notification. We still got some stuff to install. We have, how many days till gentlemen? Practically 60. Okay, you know. We have till tomorrow, till Gingerman, and we got a lot more to do. So hit that bell notification, subscribe, subscribe to Colin. I really appreciate you guys watching. And I will leave a link in the description below for all the products I use. Don't forget to use code Zitro on checkout for AWR products for 10% off. Hit up Track Dog Racing, let them know that I sent you, and hit up Spike Performance with that link below to get all your Spike Performance products. I'm tired. I don't know what I'm saying. Hi, tired. I'm Colin. Hi, Colin. I'm tired, tired. Hi, fans. Hi, people. I'm going to go to bed now. And as always, I will see you at the track.